Okay, hi guys. I'm here with a Copic coloring um, video. I've been asked by a couple people to do a Cop uh, Copic tutorial, and I am by no means um, Copic certified, but I thought I would give it a try. And I am using a new camera and angle, so bear with me guys. This is my first time using it. So let's get started. I am going to use um, the greeting farm image of Edward. He is one of my favorites. So I like using, um, to color Edward, I like using the cool grays for his hair. So let's get started with that. And this is, this video is going to be in real time. So I'm using C3, C5, C7, and C9. So first, what, and sorry if my hands get in the way here while I'm coloring, but I'm going to try and keep them out of the way. But first what we're going to do is you're going to color everything lightly with the C3, which is your lightest color. This is the way that I found um, is the easiest for me. There's lots of different ways to color out there, and this is just, I've tried pretty much everything. For me, it's easiest to start with the light color, the lightest color, and blend from there. Um, when I start with the darkest, I always end up using too much dark, and um, so I guess I'm not good at judging how much or how little I want. So um, I always start with the lightest color, and I just use brush strokes um, and go from there. Um, now I'm going in with some C5, and I'm just going to darken up the areas that I think are going to be darker, um, which is like close to the roots, right by his head. Um, right by his face, sorry, I mean, um, and going up from there. I like to keep the tips a little bit lighter, so I tend to go um, into the roots and like the back of the crown of the head um, as darker. And since this is C5, um, which is like one of your middle tones, you can use a little bit more of it because you're going to be blending in some darker areas. And you can see here that I messed up and got into his face, but we'll go back and correct it. Now I'm going in with C7. And again, this is probably going to have to be a couple parts because I'm doing this in real time for you. Um, and to show you that exactly how long it usually takes to color an image. Um, I take my time. I enjoy coloring them. So I kind of take a while to do it just going in with C7 and blending um, and putting the darker color over that C5 at closer to the roots, leaving this a little bit of a C5 above it. And it's just blending in and bringing in some of that darker color. Now I'm going with the darkest color, which is C9. And you just use very little. Sorry, make sure I'm still on camera. Um, I use very little of this color, basically just go around the edges at the crown and at the roots of his hair and add it just a little bit and I'm using brush strokes. Again, you want to go with where, especially with hair, you want to go with the flow of their hair and that makes it look more realistic. Now you just go back again with a C7 and I'm going to blend, bring it a little bit higher. Oops, that's the wrong one, sorry. C7 and go back in just to where I hit that, fo that C9 and just blend it out and bring more of that darker color up. I'm just blending, I'm just using light brush strokes here. And Edward's hair is pretty, I like it pretty dark. So I'm just using C7 where I think it needs to be darker. Then C5. And again, you just blend up from where from that, barely touching that C7 where the C7 hit and blending upwards. And again, I'm as you can see, I'm leaving the tips light because that's going to be my lightest color. So I am leaving room for the highlight and leaving room for that C3 to come in and blend and be my highlight. So I go back over, making sure that there's no brush strokes or uneven lines, and then back in with my C3 and blending up. And with the C3, I kind of just go over all of it to make sure that there's no 
harsh lines. I like my images really well blended and not having brush stroke lines. But I also don't want his hair to look gray. So you don't want to use too much of this because this will start lift. If you use too much of the C3, it'll start lifting out some of that darker color and it'll make your hair look gray. And I don't want his hair to look gray. I want it to look black. So I don't want to use too much. But I do want to get rid of those harsh lines and make his hair look really well blended, leaving it highlighted at the top. So as you can see there, okay? And I'm gonna go in with my colorless blender before I keep moving on and erase, get rid of some of those lines that I used and that I went out of the lines. And I use the chisel tip. Um, I like the chisel tip for erasing marks because of the fact that it's wide and you can put it wherever you'd like. So I use this and basically you just use the tip and push that color back into the image. So you just use light strokes and push the color back into the image. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. Okay, and push it all back. So I go across his face and push it all back into the image. All the area that I came out of the lines and I am kind of a messy colorer <laughs> so I use a lot of this colorless blender because I tend to make a lot of mistakes and it's kind of hard to erase with the darker color so you just have to kind of work with it um, and be patient you may have to go in a couple times with your colorless blender because the darker grays are hard to push back in they don't move as easily um, which is also why the um, grays are kind of hard to blend with. Um, and as the color dries, you'll see that it changes a little bit. So um, as it dries, you can go back and play with it. If you're not completely happy with the hair, um, you can always go back and play with it more. There's another little spot that I went out of the lines. So I'm just going to use, again, my colorless blender. Just push that color back into the image. Okay, all right, now let's start with the skin. So for skin, especially with Edward, I'm gonna keep him pretty white. So I'm just gonna use E000. And again, I'm gonna color his whole face. I like Edward to be very light because I think of the Twilight movie. So I'm just gonna add color to his face very little he's very pale so I'm using the lightest shade I can find which is the E000 okay his ears and his face and then I'm gonna go in with E00 barely at all because it's a little bit darker and I don't want Edward to be too dark so I'm just gonna do his ears because though that's where I would think the shadow would be and just at his hairline and down his cheeks and I'm just barely brushing color in so I really want Edward to be really fair if I were doing some another um, green farm image or magnolia or something and I wanted her or him to have an actual skin color I would use more of this E00 but I, because it's Edward I want him to be really pale and then I go back in again blending out use these little you can use little tiny circles on here on the face to blend out that color and blend the E000 and E00 okay so he's really fair and you just blend out that color leaving a little bit of the shading okay and I'm going to do the same on his arms I'm going to color E000 and then go back in very little with E00 just where his shirt hits and outside of his arm inside of his arm sorry where the shirt would leave a shadow and then go back over with the E000 basically when you start coloring with Copics I took a while before I started to get the um, blending down and I used to just look at people as I was walking around town or 
out with my kids or whatever, look at people and see where the shadows hit. When the sun beats down from a certain angle, there's going to be shadows where clothing hits and things like that. And that is what you could use for your images to get your shading and your blending correct. Um, when also your look, oh, sorry, I'm way off camera. Sorry, guys. Um, when you're looking at purchasing Copics, I always look and buy them in threes. So three colors that blend well together um, is what I use. So I'm going to stop here and part two will be his clothing, but I'm going to stop here. Thanks for watching.